On this episode of the Nationwide Real Estate Investing Podcast, we sit down with Jared Franken to learn exactly how to get started with wholesaling houses. See you in just a second. All right. Welcome to the Nationwide Real Estate Investing Podcast, where we provide actionable steps to help you get your first or your next real estate deal. Now, during this episode, you're going to discover exactly how Jared got his start in real estate. Now, for those of you who are new to the show, my name is Sean Young, today's host, and I love all things real estate. Now, before I introduce you to our incredible guest speaker today, I want to make a request that if at any point in the show you like what you're hearing, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the show so that you never miss an episode. And make sure to take a look in the description of this episode as we've packed it with thousands of dollars in free resources. Now, guys, today we have the privilege to learn from a man whose biggest success was his real estate business, having a net worth of over a million dollars without ever spending a dime of his own money. Now, prior to getting started in real estate, he was doing campus ministry in Brazil, living off $500 a month. But all that changed when he decided to get started in real estate. I would describe our next guest speaker as somebody who perseveres in the midst of uncertainty. I'd like to introduce you guys to the one, the only, Jared Frankham. Jared, thanks for being a guest on today's show. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate the intro. Awesome, man. I'm super excited to have you, man. Super excited to share your, your, your challenges, your successes, and all the things that you have to share with our audience today. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and get started, man. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about your background and where you come from and, and how'd you get started in real estate? Yes. Yeah, so I um, am from originally from Dallas, Texas, grew up there, and then I went to college in Lubbock, Texas, and that's where I'm currently living now. And I got a degree in mechanical engineering, and I got a job, an engineering job, and I was looking for something to do. And I've always had an interest in real estate ever since I was a kid. You know, I would watch the HGTV shows and mm -hmm. flip rehab and thought that was cool. But I was at work one day in my engineering job looking for something to listen to. While I was working, you know, it's monotonous computer desk work. You know, I, I could listen to something while I'm working. And I kid you not, I stumbled across the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it, uh. took, it took me two <laughs> or three days just to listen through it. And I remember, and, it, and that book's basically about the mindset shift of assets and liabilities and what, and, and, and cash flow and that sort of thing. And that's what really piqued my interest. I remember re finishing that book on audio and I was, I had goosebumps hit across both arms. I stood up looked around at my desk and realized that I do not belong here anymore. I must make a shift in, in what I'm doing. Wow. That, and that's, that's what amazing. really put the interest for real estate in me. And I started buying books and reading. I didn't know what to do, but I would just read or just start absorb information about it. Hmm. Man, that, that got, gave me goosebumps just right now thinking about it because <laughs> I remember reading that book as well. And, and man, it is such a life changer. It definitely has a, a huge impact on, on those who, who take it, read it, and apply it. So, um, man, that, that is awesome, brother. I, I love that story. Can you tell our, our fans and our listeners out there, our audience, excuse me, we don't have any fans. We have a, a family of audience and, and listeners out there. Can you tell us, us how did you actually get your first deal? How did you, how'd you go about getting, getting that? Yes, good question. So my very first deal, uh, I again, I really didn't know what to do or how to do it. I just knew that if I wanted to start real estate, I should probably at least know my neighborhoods and know the area. So I would just drive up and down the streets looking for houses that needed some work. I would figure those would be ones you could get a good deal on. And I would write them, I would drive by and write them down in a little notebook. In fact, I still have that notebook on my desk here. And I would just write down the addresses and then I would write letters to the homeowner saying, hey, uh, I love your house. You know, I would love to buy it. Would you consider selling? Give me a call or an email. And 
several, I think it took about three months of me just sending letters out like this, not having any idea if this was going to work or not, but I wanted to try it. And sure enough, I was in church one day and I got an email notification on my phone. And this guy's like, Hey, Jared, we need to sell the house. Um, here's details about it. Blah, blah, blah. Can you come take a look at it? And I could not believe it that someone <laughs> would email me off of a letter that I handwritten. And, uh, Sure enough, I get I go take a look at the house and, you know, he's asking a, a really reasonable price. And I didn't know what really what to ask. So I talked to other people in the area who I had heard were in real estate and they kind of gave me, yeah, Jared, if you could get it for this price, then it would be a good deal. Mm -hmm. And I just reverse engineered it and went back to him um, and made that offer. And he accepted it. And then I, and once I got the offer accepted, you know, we, we wrote up a, a purchase agreement and then I started looking for someone to either help me with the house or what, what to do. I just knew if I had a property under, under contract, I could do something with it. Mm -hmm. And then um, that's when I kind of stumbled into wholesaling or assigning contracts to other people where someone could take my place in the contract for some fee. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to have the responsibility of buying the house, you know, and, and fixing it up and all that. So I thought, oh man, what a great way to earn some cash. And by this point, I'd never had more than $2,000 to my name ever. And I'm, I was 27 at the time. Okay, man, that, that, that and is then, awesome. Yeah. Did you have a coach to coach at that beginning part? Did you have no. anybody to coach you through that? Did not. That is significant, listeners out there. I want you guys to, to really key in on that piece right there. Jared was taking massive, imperfect action, failing his way forward, figuring this thing out and making it happen. That's what it takes, man. That that's I, I love that piece. I love that. So please go ahead and continue. Yeah, I think no, I I had a couple of books, and that's what they said to do. <laughs> I mean, they, these some old books written in like 2004 or something. You know, I didn't know if this was still relevant or whatever. In mm -hmm. fact, the book, the, it's called Buying Real Estate Without Cash or Credit by Peter Conti and David Finkel. That's the one. And I remember highlighting everything in that book. But um, Take notes, guys. Take notes. Yeah. And I still have that book right here. I just pulled it off my, off my shelf. And uh I figured, man, if it works for these people, why not try? What do I have to lose? I mean, that, so what? If it doesn't work out, at least I tried. Exactly. And uh, sure enough, crazy story. There was another another guy I went to college with who had gotten started in real estate. He ended up being the guy who wanted to buy the house. And so I reached out to him, and he went in to look at it and did a better – more thorough inspection of the house and realized that there was a several issues I had missed and he needed to buy the house $12,000 for less than I had it under contract for. Wow. wow. So basically wiping out all of my profit and, and couldn't do anything, but he showed me pictures. He showed me why he walked me through. Here's how I can offer this. So what I did is I walked back to the seller and said, hey, you know, here's the pictures. Here's why. Here's some things we didn't see. Mm -hmm. For really to make this work, we have to be here. And I hated having to go back after signing a contract. But, mm -hmm. he, you know, he saw the pictures. Whoa, Jared, I didn't know that either. There was a, a – the house is being held up by a car jack, you know, one of those, you know, for your spare tire. Indeed. And uh, one of the piers – one of the beams was held up by that. So – um. That that's goes, a okay. That, no, Jared, we understand. That makes sense. And we were able to adjust the, the amendment or amend the contract, and I was able to then resell it. That is awesome, Jared. I, I really like that how you went back to the seller. A lot of our, our listeners out there as well, they get intimidated when they come across an opportunity that they they just they're like, Hey, this I, I kind of over overpriced it, or you know. My buyers aren't buying, you know, they aren't really mm -hmm. biting yeah, on yeah. it or they're giving me some feedback and they're afraid to take that feedback to their sellers. You've got to do that. Um, that's exactly what Jared did. He took the feedback that he received from his potential cash buyers back to the seller, not in a way like, hey, Mr. Seller, you, you are totally wrong about what you want to sell that property for, but more in an educational, <laughs> we're yeah. in this together type of way. Like here, here's the pictures. 
I, I'm, this is what I'm kind of up against. And, you know, I, I want to help you out here, but, you know, can you work with me a little bit? Mm hmm. Man. I, yeah, I, I, I think I, what was crazy is because that was my first. I did not know what I was doing in that realm at really at all. I just I think what actually helped me was being a beginner and just not knowing what I didn't know and just figured, well, let's just, you know, it. it it's really no different. You know, I, I, I think one of the things that se it's seemingly so challenging about real estate is, oh, but I don't know the contracts. Oh, but you know, that's so much money. It, it's no different than negotiating over a TV on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Indeed. Just houses have more zeros <laughs> on it. So there's room for more profit. That's really all it is. Right, right. I, uh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. And so I, I, I just... I just would, took a step and then figured out what to do from there. I think that's what helped me do the deal rather than thinking I need to know everything and know what all the possible outcomes and know all the details before I ever took any action. I, if I would have done that, I, I, to this day, would not have been in real estate. I, I think that's the fastest way to get out of something is to just overanalyze it and over plan and over prepare. 100%. Or you'll never make any real, it's just, it's creative avoidance, really, when you 100%. do all those things. I'm I'm right there with you on that, brother. I always say, man, when the lights are green between here and your destination, you're, they'll never all be green. When that first one turns green, you got to go and have faith and belief that yes. you know that when the Love next that. light comes, you'll know exactly what to do. So man, we're on the same page, brother. It's it's amazing how successful people have a, a similar level of thinking. It's just amazing how that works, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Let's jump right into the next step, man. How is your operation looking today? I, I know that when you first got started, it was just you. You were you were a one man show. You know how how are you guys looking mm -hmm. today? Yeah, so now I have I just recently hired a guy helping me acquire houses, and he is phenomenal. Um, he had done one deal by himself that I helped him with, okay. and he decided that it would make a lot of sense to join on with someone who's got a lot of experience to learn faster than to try to figure it out on his own. You know, it took him seven months to do his first deal. Mm -hmm. And then after joining on with me, he's, he's put three properties on a contract in four weeks. Nice. In fact, we just signed a contract today, like 10 minutes before this call, we, we put one under contract. Uh, so I have him and then I have uh, two virtual assistants who are helping me with some data and some market outreach, those sorts of things. So there's just four of us at the moment. Okay, four man show. That that is amazing. That I I love how that guy was a go getter. You recognize it. This is again, just as how you, that's how you got started. You were a go getter. People recognize that. And and Absolutely. You, when you're out there, the universe will work in your favor. You have to be going for what you want, and and things will line up. Again, you got to have faith. Got to have belief that it's going to be that way. And it's magic how it happens. It seems like it's magic, but uh, it's just all those things that I said. It's 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 a, it's something that you can repeat. As you can see, successful people are all doing the same things over and over and mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. So, Jared, with, with that being said, our listeners they they really want to hear how how do you do this? So, if I was somebody new. And, and I had no clue really what to do and on how to get started. What what are some of the actionable steps that I could take to, to go out there and make this happen for myself as well? I have two things to do. One is to get in your car or your bicycle or skateboard, whatever, walk. Mm -hmm. And in your own neighborhood, I guarantee, unless if you're in some elite HOA neighborhood, and even then there still might be some, uh, there's going to be houses that need some love. It's just plain and simple. You know, stuff happens and houses fall apart and not everyone wants to fix them up. So look around for houses that are beat up. And then two, um, just start asking people near you, hey, do you know anyone who does real estate at all? And if they don't know, then they might not know somebody who does real estate and ask and just start to grow your inner circle of, people who are in the real estate realm and introduce yourself. Hey, I'm getting started in real estate. I would love to get to know you and what you're doing and bring value to you and your business. Mm -hmm. And those people end up being people I buy from, I sell to, we do deals with, we collaborate. And it's just that simple. It's just that simple. Man, I love it. You, you, you definitely, 
it definitely takes effort and takes work. But all the things that that Jared just laid out, guys, I hope you were taking notes. If you if you're in your local market and you can get in your car, you're you're get on your feet, get in your skateboard on your bike. Like he said, it does, there's no excuses. There's no reason why you can't get out there. There's always going to be transactions happening. There's going to be people buying and there's going to be people selling. There's going to be people fixing. There's going to be people flipping. So, guys, get in your market. Know who those players are. And like Jared said, they'll help you walk your way through getting this thing going. So, Jared, what, what market are you guys in? Are, do you, are you currently in your local market now or, or have you expanded I into other markets? I am. So I'll, uh, I'm in, still in Lubbock, Texas, and it's a small city. We've got, um, I mean, not tiny, but co- the whole metropolitan area is about a quarter million people. Okay. And we've got lower, lower priced houses. You know, average sales price here is probably about $200,000. And it might have shifted over the last year, but not anything crazy. Um, you know, like Phoenix or Dallas or these giant cities with hyper expensive houses where, you know, if, if I can do it in a small market, you know, you absolutely can do it in a bigger market. It just happens to be where I live and you know, it's where I like. Nice, nice. So what marketing technique works best for you and your team? Um, right now, my marketing technique that works the best is I do uh, text message outreach. Okay. That is above and beyond my best. Um, and cold calling is a very close second. It's almost 50-50, but text messaging is just has a little edge got it got it and do you ha- do you have like a team that that does that texting for you you know i know you said you had a team of four are, are they managing that or mm-hmm. do you handle that directly as of today i have uh, i'm tweaking it i'm experimenting so i have taken over doing the texting again myself mm-hmm. but in the past i've had um, a virtual assistant do that for me because that's a task that's very easily automated but from time to time, I want I want to check and and experiment and tweak. And so I'm spending a few weeks just trying a few things to see if I can improve how it's performing. But right now it's me and it doesn't take a lot of time at all really to do that because with technology now, you can send thousands of tech messages in a day quite easily. Quite easily. 100% agree with you on that. What I know that you said earlier, you used to write, you know, write things down on a piece of paper. Are, are you still doing that now or have you converted over to a CRM? Yes. So I do. I, I do use Podio. I, I, and it, I was probably four or five deals, three or three, three to five deals, somewhere in that range before I had any, any software, any of that. I literally just almost all of my deals at that until then were in this orange notebook or on a piece of paper, but now I use Podio Mm -hmm. and it's not very expensive. I think it's like 25 bucks a month or something. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's what I use for my CRM. And it, all that means is just, it's like a Rolodex for people I've had conversations with. Exactly. Track of the conversations. I know CRM can be a, a buzzword, but really it's all it is. (laughs) Yeah. It could be a bit intimidating guys. It just stands for customer relationship management tool or, or something like that. Honestly, it doesn't even matter because Jared literally just proved how he didn't need that at first to get it, to get his deals. I've kind of pointed that out because I wanted to show our audience that man, there's so many tools out there, but don't hide behind those tools, go out there and take some action and make, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't have fancy software. I didn't have an LLC. I didn't have <laughs> coaches. I mean, I did, I did four or five deals before I even thought about buying into coaching. Um, just cause I wanted to, at that point I knew it was possible. And then I wanted to hone in my skills. Mm-hmm. So you don't you definitely don't think you have to, someone has to walk you through it. Look, all the information's out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, get started coaching. All coaching does, which is coaching is wonderful. And I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on coaching, you know, after, but um, the benefit of coaching is that it, it takes the amount of time for you to learn something and, and decreases it to minuscule amounts of time so that we can get up and going faster and faster rather than making tons of mistakes by yourself and making tons of errors and not knowing what to do. They'll kind of help guide you, but really the, the actionable steps are there. It's, it's have conversations with people who want to sell their house. I mean, how you don't need any coaching to tell you that. Just have simple conversations. Hey, would you consider an offer? That's really what it takes. Am, I mean, am I wrong? 
No, you are 100 percent right. It, it is yeah. all about conversations, building relationships, developing rapport and keeping it in the realm of servitude, helping. Don't go out there just looking to grab deals, guys. In, in my opinion, that 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 approach doesn't really work. You got to really be looking to solve problems. And, and when you do that, uh, you'll solve a lot of problems and make money at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. So, Deals come, profit comes from recognizing a difference in potential from what what is currently out there. So, you know, when we if, if I were to resell a house or if I flip or if, what I'm doing now, I just see the, the future potential versus what there is today. And how can I how can I um, increase that that spread there? So many times it's solving a, a problem with us, with the sellers having or B. Now that I'm doing rehabs and stuff, is how can I add value to the property afterward? And it makes for a life-changing amount of money. It truly does. Awesome, awesome. So now that you are into rehabs, what percentage of your business would you say is rehabs versus wholesaling? So as of this year, I'm, again, constantly experimenting, but I'm making a switch to try. I'm trying to buy and keep everything that I possibly can. And... Um, uh, not wholesale as much, but what I've learned from doing that again, I, I'm just taking action and learning, getting feedback. Mm -hmm. Is I also need to keep some cash reserve to you know keep everything flowing fluidly. So now the tail end of 22, I'm starting to wholesale a little bit more to to generate some more cash, and then once that reserve gets built back in, I'll start keeping more. And it's just it's a constantly evolving thing. And um, but I would say. Um, right now I'm keeping one house for every one that I'm wholesaling at this point. Nice. Nice. W what would you do if the market takes a dip, Jared? Are you, are you worried about that? No, I'm, I'm not because thankfully, you know, after reading and after realizing or after seeing other people gone through this, just like anything, there's cycles and there's ways to make money, um, in any cycle of real estate, you know, say if it, if the bottom falls out like it did in 2008 and 2009, um, there's strategies to start buying those houses and, and creating value there. You know, just like we had in the last year or two, it was quite easy to buy houses and create value, but it's no difference. It, it's no difference. So no, I'm not worried about it. Everyone's always going to need a place to live. Uh, no matter what, I don't even care if the metaverse and even any of that stuff happens. <laughs> You're going to need a place to live. It's like doctors. You're always going to need medical. You're always going to need food to eat. You're going to need a place to live. So no, I'm not worried about it one bit. Um, it, it's just, look, the, the, you know, the rules may change a little bit, you know, interest rates and, and prices and things, but just learn how to roll with the punches, learn how to play the game with, with the current rules. And it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. If you can buy houses, I'll, I'll put it this way. If you can buy houses at incredible discounts compared to the today's market, you'll always be ahead. Because if you're buying very, very, very cheap, mm -hmm. according to anything else, you're going to have some potential there that you can you can capitalize on. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I would agree on that. I would agree. Now, guys, as as many of our listeners out there know, the Nationwide Real Estate Investing Podcast is a show that allows our speakers to break down exactly what they do, just as Jared is doing today. So now in the description of this episode is going to be a link to be able to reach out to our guest speaker directly as well and take advantage of any free giveaways that he would be generously allowing our audience to have also. So make sure you take a look in the description, guys. Jared, what would you say is, is your biggest why? Like, what, what is your why? Why do you do this? <laughs> That's a great question. I think my why has evolved after doing this. At first glance, I think everyone's why boils down to they want the best life for themselves and their family and their future. But now that after realizing that I can do that and I can have a great future and, and build and provide for my family, um, future family. I'm still not married yet, but now it's like, I want to see other people win just as I have, because if it has worked for me, it can definitely work for anyone else. So now I have this, this big audacious goal that I would like to personally help 100 people become millionaires and some, ah, that's my why now it's no longer for myself. Cause mm -hmm. I've already done that. 
It's I would like to see myself make a hundred millionaires. Jared, that gave me goosebumps again, brother. I promise you, I have an episode where I recorded like maybe six months ago, where I, I maybe no, it was maybe six or eight months ago. I put out the same challenge, man. That I, I want to turn no way. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to take a hundred people and make them millionaires, brother. Seven figure earners, man. So oh, wow. I, I love that goal, man. And I love your why. That that's awesome, man. So I, I definitely can understand why you're so driven and, and how we've even crossed paths, man, because we're on the same mission to, to do the same thing, man. I love yeah. it. What is your biggest struggle right now that you would have to say? Um, my biggest struggle to tell you the truth is um uh, shiny object syndrome. I there's opportunities and things that that uh grab my attention and I want to get into bigger, better things and grow and try new stuff. But, you know, through the, through the three and a half years I've been doing this and I need to just keep reminding myself is stick to what works. Oftentimes the boring, not oftentimes 99.99% of the time, what's boring, what's proven, <laughs> what works, what's functions, what's predictable is what makes an incredible amount of money. It's not, the flashy, neat, fancy, new gizmo and, and doodad. It's stick to the thing that works. And finding discounted real estate is a thing that works. I agree 100%, 100%. So what would you think is the biggest lesson that, that you've learned like over the years of building up your business? Oh man, personal development. My income will never exceed my personal development. So yeah. And that, that's in multiple facets, right? How I engage with other people, how I engage with myself, how I look to myself. One thing I've discovered, and this is the, the single point, is when I would have jobs, you know, where I would have a boss who would, I was accountable to, mm -hmm. I would want to give them my absolute best effort and really do well. What I've noticed, though, is starting my business and by the way, no one in my family was in business. Um, you know, I'm the first Frankum to even go to college. I'm the first one to start my own business. You know, everyone else was in concrete construction. So, so, so Jared, are you saying you didn't have a silver spoon in your mouth? You didn't have no, this hand it to you? No, in <laughs> fact, <laughs> you know, I was in high school during the, the recession in 08, 09, 2010. My 18th birthday, I got a box of Cheez-Its and I can invite some friends over. That's, you know, that was what my 18th birthday was. And I was grateful. I loved it. I had a great time. Mm -hmm. um, but no, no, no. In, in fact, we were on food stamps at that time. It was it was a challenge. But um, what I've learned is it seems to be I've discovered that it's I'm, I'm more loose on myself as my own employer than a boss than a boss would be, you know, if I. So if I'm if I really want to grow or do anything, I have to hold myself to the same level of accountability that my boss would. And so that's really what I've discovered just in the past six months, to tell you the truth, is simply do what I said I'm going to do, even though I'm telling myself. So if I tell myself I'm going to send a thousand text messages today, commit and do it. You know, don't give don't let myself have these excuses. Oh, well, you know what? I really just wanted to watch that show or you know what? Susie really wanted to go to lunch today. So, you know, I can push it tomorrow. You know, I'm my own boss. Mm -hmm. I've, I've gone through that season and realized that just slows me down. So stick to what works and, and be disciplined. Man, I, I love it, man. I really love that. Stick to what works. Be disciplined. Don't try to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. And, and that shiny object syndrome, it hits a lot of us entrepreneurs, Jared. So you're not alone with that, brother. <laughs> that yeah. has definitely been... Uh, something that all, all of us have to fight against and, and knowing how to say no, mm -hmm. you know, knowing how to say no to certain things. Huge. Now, guys, as a reminder, at any point in the show, if you like what you're hearing, like, like I am right now, make sure you give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the show so that you never miss an episode. It's your engagement that drives us to keep doing this for the community for absolutely free. Now, now, Jared, can you tell us, you know, what do you think your life would be like if you had never gotten involved with real estate and, you know, you were still doing missionary work? Um, you know, how do you think your life would be right now? No question. I would still be doing missionary work. I love our campus ministry. I still love it. Um, so I, I know that I would do that and I know that it would be fulfilling in different ways, but I could not imagine myself not doing real estate. Could not. 
simply could not imagine myself not doing real estate now. I remember I was in, I was still doing some campus ministry. And I remember telling some of the staff there, like, look, I really want to go start my own business. I'm in, I'm in our group meetings and I'm not focusing. I'm just thinking on like, what if I were to do this? What if I were to try to talk to these sellers? What if I would, you know, could, you know, add 500 houses to my list today rather than just 20. And so I had a conversation with him. I said, Hey guys, I would like to go start my own business. If it crashes and burns, fails to the ground, it doesn't matter. That's okay. Um, but I can't seem to, I can't seem to focus without trying to quench this desire to build a business. And so I just went off and tried it. Who, you know, whether or not it fails or, or works out doesn't matter. All I, all I knew is I had to go try it. And so I'm so grateful that I did because my life is absolutely changed. That's amazing, brother. I, I love it, man. And, and I, I just love the fact that you are a person that just seems like you want to serve, man. And uh, that that's going to always reward you in the end. So I love it, man. Love it. Yeah. Well, likewise with you. I mean, I, I see that you've got this podcast and I would, you know, realize, man, I need to do one too. Cause what a great, what a great resource to reach people. I, and I'm sure that you've reached tons of people Indeed. Uh, through, through this platform. So that's a great idea. Yeah, it's, it is. It's an awesome way to give back to the community, man. And, um, you know, you know, anything you need with that brother, I got your back. I got your back, man. So oh, wonderful. I love it, man. We have made it to what I, I call the, the rapid fire session of the show. And this is where I ask you a question and you just give me the first answer that comes to your mind. OK, let's go. Let's do it. All right. On a scale let's of do it. on a scale of one to ten, Jared, how strict were your parents? Four. All right. Get up early or get up late early. How many hours of sleep do you get? Five. Your favorite or last book read? Uh, favorite book, um, real estate book, I'll say, is, is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And the last one that I read was um, Be The Way of a Superior Man. Oh, well, I've got that book right here. My goodness, I'm telling you, brother, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's, that, that is awesome. All right. If you could be any superhero, who would it be? Who? First thing that comes to mind, Superman. Don't know why. Something everyone should do less of. Screen time, video games, TV, cell phone, TikTok, computer, all that. Something everyone should do more of. Spend time face-to-face -face with people that matter. NFTs, bang or bust? I have no idea. <laughs> if you had one wish, what would it be, Jared? Oh, man, that's a good question. If I had one wish... Um, man, what a great question. That's just too thought provoking just to give some, something fast like that. But one wish would be to, I'll tell you what, to be, <laughs> to have my family move to the same city as me. I live by myself. You know, I'm, I'm six hours away from all my family. I would love for my family to come move here. That would be an awesome wish. That, that's a good one too. That, that is awesome. I love it. I love it, man. Jared, how can our audience out here get a hold of you and, and reach you for more information? Yes. Um, a couple of ways you can find me on Facebook or Instagram and it's just Jared Frankham. And then also I'll, I'll leave my phone number here just in case if anyone would like to text or call, I love talking real estate. I love helping because how much this has benefited me. I want to pay it forward. So you can reach me at 469-323-4783. Awesome. Awesome. And I'll make sure to include a link in the description to include that in the link in the description as well, guys. So you'll also have that. Jerry, is there anything that you would like to share with our audience before we depart? Last thing is leaders are readers. Don't don't sleep on that. When I was a kid, I hated the thought of reading was just so stupid. Why well, read when I can just watch it on the Internet or, or TV or whatever? Um, but I've discovered that so much uh, success and and blessing comes from reading. So don't stop reading. Learn a lot. You know, re read books by people of consequence who do things that matter. And I don't know why it changes, but it totally makes a difference in life. Great, great piece of advice, man. I, I love it. Guys, you have all made it to the end of the show. So please give yourselves a pat on the back because most people never finish what they start and you just did. 
Now, if you got any value out of today's show, please share this with a friend or on your Facebook page, like the video, subscribe to our channel and send us topics that you want to learn more about. So guys, until the next episode, you can catch me on any one of my social media platforms and I'll see you guys on the other side. Adios. Peace. With this crown on my head, I'm seated on the throne. The top is so alone. Only thing that keeps me gone is I know my city love me. I know my city love me.